The Bible verse is from John 10, 1 to 10. Truly, truly, I say to you, he does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in another way. That man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens, the shepherd hears his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all of his own, he, does, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger will not follow, but they will flee from him, but, for they do not know the voice of a stranger. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus said again, truly I truly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So when we look at our scripture for today, we can sometimes become confused by its meaning and its imagery. Now do not become downhearted by this, because after all, in verse 6, uh, Jesus had to explain it further to the people that he was talking to. They didn't understand either. And that should make us feel a little bit better, because this particular metaphor was really targeted at the people of this time and area. So if they struggled to understand what Jesus was saying, I think it's okay if we admit that we might struggle with it too. So to fully understand what Jesus is saying here is necessary for us to establish a baseline understanding of what he is describing. And in our picture here that you see, uh, this is what a sheep pen would have looked like during the time of Jesus. It would have consisted of stone walls just high enough so that the sheep could not jump over it. And it would have an opening in the front and that opening wasn't always gated. Usually it was not gated. It was the responsibility of the shepherd to sleep in the opening. And you can see the shepherd there stretched out across the opening. And he would stretch out there so that the sheep could not escape and that uh, without the knowledge of the shepherd and no predator or no thief could go through the gate without waking him up. When Jesus tells us that he is the door, what he is telling us is that he is the one that is guarding us. He is guarding us from the thieves and the robbers. He is making sure that the sheep do not come out when they hear the voices of the thieves and robbers. You see, at this time, it was common for the sheep that belonged to several people, they would be penned all together at one night, uh, all together at night. So when their master came for them in the morning, the sheep would respond to the voice and follow him out of the pen. Jesus is telling us that he is making sure that we are not let out of the pen by those that wish to kill, steal, and destroy us, both physically, but especially spiritually. And Jesus tells us also that he is the door of salvation, that those sheep that have been led in by him are going to be led out by him as well into pastures. And he closes by telling them that he has come to give abundant life to those that have entered the pen through him. Now, hopefully, what he is saying has become more clear to us. You see, he is stating that he is the key to our salvation, that he will take care of us, and that he has come to bring us life abundant if we agree to have him be our shepherd. Now, that sounds like a pretty good deal, right? Don't you all want to be sheep? Ah, here comes the issue. Here's what we struggle with, allowing ourselves to be sheep. You see, I had a friend who grew up farming and raising livestock in Oklahoma. He worked on a farm that was owned by his grandparents. And in visiting with him and his grand grandfather one time, I asked, what was his favorite animal to raise? And his grandfather said that he had always liked raising cattle. 
He told me that it wasn't easy, but he liked the animals, seemed to have a good rapport with them, and they tended to listen to him. So then I asked him, what was his least favorite animal to raise then? And his responded by telling me, sheep. He said they were often stubborn, they seemed to be just plain dumb to him, and he said that the worst part about raising sheep was when one of them would lead the others into doing something that caused a problem. He told me how the other sheep would follow that one sheep blindly, and it often caused all sorts of issues for him. Now, no offense to anyone that loves raising sheep out there. This is just what I was told by an old oaky farmer. But that idea of sheep being dumb or sheep being led blindly, it's something that has leaked into our own modern culture today. When someone is following something that another one disagrees with, it is common now for that person to be called a sheep. It implies that they are scared or they are not too bright and that they are being led by someone else or gasped. They are part of a group mentality. Now, this is especially something that we do not like as Americans. You see, we are taught from a young age that we are all individuals, that we are all going to be given our say in this wonderful land, that we must strive to break free of any and all things that would yoke us to another. And indeed, we value our independence over almost anything else. But I need you to understand this point. In order for Christ to be our shepherd, well, we must be his sheep. I know that that may not sit easy with all of us. I know that for myself, the idea of being a sheep is something that I do not easily accept and did not easily accept. I want to tell you a little story that illustrates a little, about, a little bit about my own independent streak. See, when I was in college, I decided one day to get a haircut. Now, it seems like a normal thing to do, right, to get your hair cut? Well, I decided I was going to get a mohawk. And so I had one of the other students do the haircut for me because I didn't have money to go to a barber to get it done. And I ran into the dean of students the next day. Uh, now, I need you to know that this was a very small college in the mountains of West Virginia. And so the dean of students knew us all by name. And I ran into him and he said, what did you do to your hair? And I, being the smart mouth fellow that I was, I told him, I got a haircut. And he responded by telling me, you missed a spot in the middle. Now, the next week, I decided that a mohawk was not rebellious enough, so I had a friend of mine dye my mohawk blue. Unexpectedly, I got a phone call from the dean of students that night, letting me know that I had been awarded a scholarship by the alumni of the school, and that I would be going up in front of them the next day to accept it and pose for pictures with them. Now, when I showed up to the ceremony, in my shirt and tie, dressed appropriately with my blue mohawk. The dean of students again looked at me. He took a big, deep breath. He sighed, and he said, what have you done now? How do you think they're going to react to seeing you look like this? And what if the alumni look at you and say, we're not going to give this kid this scholarship. Look at him. And I told him, I don't know, and frankly, I don't care. You see, what I have come to learn is this, that young man that I was, that rebellious person that, be, that valued being independent over all things, he wasn't independent at all. You see, he was a sheep, but he was a sheep that spent too many years of his life listening to the wrong shepherd. You see, what I thought, what, what I thought was I was on my own path, I was being independent, but what it really was, I was simply being led astray by the voice of the world. I spent my time pursuing the things that would provide me with nothing but heartache, and most days, a headache the next morning. You see, what I've come to realize is that there is something better than being an independent rebel, and that is being a sheep for the good shepherd. See, I thank God that he kept calling after me, and that one day I finally started to follow the right voice again. 
You see, accepting his love and his protection is so much greater than the feeling of being able to say, I am doing this all on my own. It is much more meaningful to feel his love than it is for me to be able to remain that smart mouthed young man with a terrible haircut. And I am thankful each day that I get to be called one of his sheep. Now perhaps you do not have the same rebellious streak in you, but you still struggle to accept being a sheep for the good shepherd. Well, maybe it's because you're afraid of giving up control. Well, if that is, the, that is where you find yourself, I would like to give you this thought to ponder. You see, there is freedom in submission. I know that sounds like an oxymoron, right? Freedom in submission. But you see, if you are willing to submit to the will of God, of the good shepherd, you can become free from the sins of this world. <coughs> Excuse me. You become free from the consequences of death, and you gain the freedom of abundant life, just as Jesus said. Now that freedom that we gain through submission, it does have requirements of those that accept it. It is not freedom to live our lives in any way that we want. It is not freedom to shout down our neighbors as sheep of this world when they disagree with us. It is a freedom that allows us to bring ourselves into right and harmonious living with the teachings of our Good Shepherd. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16, we are told that we are to live as a people who are free, not using our freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. You see, we are told how we are to use our freedom and not just to live as servants of God. We are told to use it for good and not for evil. And hopefully that is exactly what we are doing. So I pray that when someone calls you a sheep for following Christ, you simply look at that person and you say, Bah! Or maybe you just look at them and you say, yes, I am, and he's the best shepherd that I could ever ask for. Now, perhaps you haven't answered the call of the good shepherd in your life. Maybe you haven't been able to allow yourself to come out of the pen when he calls your name. Well, I urge you to listen to his voice today. So when he calls you that you come out, if you want to accept Jesus as your shepherd today, and if you need to say, Jesus, I hear you again, and I recognize you as my shepherd. I ask that you come forward today during our closing song. Now, my challenge for you this week is a bit off of the sermon, but it's appropriate for the day. I want you to reach out to the women in your life that have helped you and mothered you and say thank you. Whether they are your biological mother, your adopted mother, your stepmother, or your surrogate mother, whoever they may be in your life. Simply reach out to them and say thank you today. Amen.